Upon knowing the death of Filipino comedian Chocolate Garcia, who is a Dabawenyo, my heart has been shattered. Not because he is my kababayan, but because I pity the life he'd gotten. Was his life a waste? Who am I to judge? Was his life or was my life perfect? Certainly not. God is still purging, processing, refining, and purifying me, though the process is painful. And are you not being processed too? For sure you too. What is life? According to King Solomon, it is meaningless. All our toil, hard work will all gone by. The work of our hand be left behind when we die, and we cannot enjoy it in our eternal destination. So what is it if you gain the whole world, like with your education, awards, titles and accomplishments, fame, popularity, wealth, health, good looks, luxury of life, yet you lose your soul? What do we need to invest our time the most? What should be prioritized? Temporary or everlasting? Which is more important to nourish, the body or the spirit? Our flesh, our physical body decays, yet we value it the most. That's very sad. We spend lots of money to make it beautiful and attractive. It's as if we are making the dust beautiful, but its nature is, as it is, a dust. Nothing but a dust. It stinks. It get old. It get inferior to other precious creation of God, such as gold. The reason God made humans from dust and not from gold is so that humans would remain humble as the earth is beneath, been trampled by feet, and so that we could not be like Lucifer, who was created with much beauty and glory, that he became so proud. As high as anything goes up, as low as it goes down, that's the law of gravity. Our nature, we, our physical being, that's what we live by on this earth. Our education system programs our mind that we are physical beings. But we must acknowledge that we are not only limited to physical body. We are spiritual beings inside our physical bodies having a soul. Our flesh, our physical body decays, yet we value it the most. That's very sad. We spend lots of money to make it beautiful and attractive. It's as if we are making the dust beautiful, but its nature is, as it is, a dust. Nothing but a dust. It stinks. It get old. It get inferior to other precious creation of God, such as gold. Our physical bodies remain on earth, returns to the dust as it is, a dust. It decays. Yet our soul, our emotion and will, and the spirit, which is mine, live forever and ever. So where do you want your soul and spirit to dwell for eternity after our physical body dies? There is no purgatory. There are only heaven and hell. How to prove this? It's in the Bible. Read the story of the rich man and Lazarus in Luke chapter 16 verses 19 to 31. While still alive, we can choose our eternal dwelling. But how do we live our life in this earth? Do we only live by our own alone? Do we always justify our sinful nature by saying, This is me. I'm but a human, so I cannot change my own. And no one can change me. If I'm an adulterer or a gay, homosexual, I must be accepted by who I am. If I go to hell, I cannot do anything about it because I cannot change my situation. It is the most pitiful conclusion. Is anything hard for God? All things are possible if we believe. God can change you and me if we only let Him, if we accept Jesus Christ. If we will open our hearts to Him, He heals, He changes hearts, he delivers the captives and sets them free. He is the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow because He is gracious and God is love. We can always ask guidance from the Holy Spirit because if there is no conviction from the Holy Spirit, there will be no realization. If you have not realized you sin, you won't repent. If there is no repentance, there is no forgiveness of sins. If we are not forgiven, woe to us, we deserve eternal death. God always do the first move, then it's up to us if we we'll respond with our moves. Let us seek Him while He may be found, because we cannot predict death. We should be always prepared at all times. 
Luke chapter 12 verses 22 to 32 says, Then Jesus said to his disciples, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat, or about your body, what you will wear. For life is more than food, and the body more than clothes. Consider the ravens, they do not sow nor reap. They have no storeroom nor barn, yet God feeds them. And how much more valuable you are than birds. Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to your life? Since you cannot do this very thing, why do you worry about the rest? Consider how the wildflowers grow. They do not labor nor spin. Yet I tell you, that even Solomon in all his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today, and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, how much more will be what how much more will he clothe you, you of little faith? And do not set your heart on what you will eat or drink. Do not worry about it, for the pagan would run after all such things, and your father knows that you need them. But seek his kingdom, and these things will be given to you as well. Do not be afraid, little flock, for your father has been pleased to give you the kingdom. And Luke chapter 12, verses 35 to 40 says, Be dressed ready for service and keep your lamps burning, like servants waiting for their master to return from a wedding banquet, so that when he comes in next, they can immediately open the door for him. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them watching when he comes. Truly I tell you, he will dress himself to serve, will have, him re will have them recline at the table, and will come and wait on them. It will be good for those servants whose master finds them ready, even if he comes in the middle of the night or toward daybreak. But understand this, if the owner of the house had known at what hour the thief was coming, he would not have let his house be broken. You also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come at an hour when you do not expect Him. I will share to you the parable of the rich fool in Luke 12, 13 to 21. Someone in the crowd said to him, Teacher, tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me. Jesus replied, Man, who appointed me a judge or an arbiter between you? Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. Life does not consist in an abundance of possessions. And he told them this parable. The ground of a certain rich man yielded an abundant harvest. He thought to himself, What shall I do? I have no place to store my crops. Then he said, This is what I'll do. I will tear down my barns and build bigger ones, and there I will store my surplus grain. And I'll say to myself, You have plenty of grain laid up for many years. Take life easy. Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said to him, you fool, this very night your life will be demanded from you. Then who will get what you have prepared for yourself? This is how it will be with whoever stores up things for themselves, but is not rich toward God. Sadhus and Darsalvar said that if you think life is just making a living, having family, getting married, having children, raising them and sending them to school, waiting for them to have their own family, and taking care of your grandchildren, and die, you miss half of your life. You have lived such a miserable life. Many saints died without even fulfilling their life purpose and assignment. What is your life purpose? Dear Lord Jesus, Help us to be always watchful, to be always on guard with our mouth, thoughts, emotions, and actions, to live life as if it's our last, to be aware that our lives are just borrowed and our real home is in heaven with you. May you be glorified in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's just end our video here. That's all for today. Thank you for watching. You may share this video to your family and friends. And I hope you're blessed too. Till next time, God bless you.